Welcome, family, to another edition of T. Leo's Presents the Bridge. Uh, we're back again. And guess what? You know, we got Twyla back in our house. Twyla is our investigative reporter. You know, so so she got some stuff. And, and, and you know something now? I ain't going to say her sidekick, but today's guest, we have Cheryl in the house. Cheryl! And, you know something now? Right. Between these two, you know, some day was out shaking some trees, and, and, and you should have seen the rotten tomatoes that came out of them trees. Oh, God. And tomatoes don't even grow on trees. So... Okay, but anyway, um, let me send a shout out to uh, uh, Francis. Happy birthday, friend! Happy belated birthday, Francis. Yes, cousin. You know, uh, 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 I want to send a shout out to our gurus, uh, uh, Reggie, Ron. Ron, and Stan the Man is all working right, the wheels right, of steel right. today. Right. So, all you know, right. okay, they ain't wheels of steel, but they buttons of steel. Is that right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But, you know, I want to send a shout out to my man, Stan. Oh, also... Uh, uh, to my boy, uh, JD, I know where you be, uh, Abstract Excellence. Okay. All right, in the house. Um, before we get started, and ladies. Teresa. Oh, oh, and Teresa. Okay, see, it's her turn to shake the tree, because, you know, it was still some tomatoes up there that Shirley <laughs> and, and, and uh, Twyla didn't, didn't shake off, so we had to send <laughs> Teresa up there to finish the shaking and get them rotten tomatoes out, out the tree, because, you know, so... <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> yeah, you, you know what I mean? Oh, um, wait a minute. I was going to say something else. Okay, you said else. Teresa. Who? I said else. You said say something else. I said else. She's been hanging around me too much because she knows something. That she's <laughs> chiming in on, on my jokes. <laughs> and they're good. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. Oh, I, I, I want to uh, um, uh, do a little quick editorial and I'm gonna try to be calm about this mm. but uh, this past weekend I was watching uh, uh, Castile what's his name Philip Philip Coleman Hill? no Who's that? Castile the dude the police shot Philando Castile Philando 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 okay uh, you know they showed the video and 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 the dude said uh, the cops pulled up to him one cop was on one side, one cop was on the other side. He told the officer, I have a gun. He said, okay, the officer, uh, don't take it out. Don't pull it out then. Don't pull it out then. And he said, I'm not. I'm not going to pull it out. You could hear the, the, the audio. And uh, he said, don't pull it out. So the girlfriend said, he's not pulling it out. He said, don't pull it out. Then he pulled his weapon and pow, 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 six or seven times, just bam, 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 bam. Now. If, if that wasn't enough, oh, first and foremost, they got it on film. And they acquitted the officer that did the shooting. Yeah, I know. They acquitted the officer. Mm -hmm. Now, with all this, we're at war, black people. So y'all better wake up, man. What, you going to wake up when you're in change? Next to, I was going to say that that was going to lead into what my lady's going to have to say. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, uh, um, the, the, the cop that was doing the shooting... You know, now, if I'm the cop's partner and I see he's shooting, I'm going to draw my weapon and see what's going on. You, you know, but the cop, the other cop, never drew his weapon. As a matter of fact, he cut a jive, skipped off. Yes. He damn near, excuse me, he damn near, I said it again, didn't I? Well, he damn near ran because he was ready to haul, haul tail, man. Like, he a cop. And, of course, maybe he didn't hear the commands of his partner or whatnot, or he didn't know what the heck his partner was doing, but he was ready to haul ass. He left he because he didn't want to be a witness to see the exact end when that man slumped over. Okay, we'll go with that. But yeah, uh, he he never pulled his gun. He went out the screen, 
and the car door opened and the little kid got out and you saw him uh, come here little Marsha or whatever the girl name was uh, you, you know come here and he never drew his gun never drew his gun and and like I said uh, now hold up check this out uh, he was acquitted by uh, what they call it a jury of his peers so that means folks like you and us so they victimized this dude so much that a jury of his peers found this white hunky piece of trash innocent we're at war black folks again now my next thing is the, hey did y'all go to the circus wednesday and uh uh where was it tuesday tuesday was it tuesday tuesday the 19th no was it no when was it was it wednesday the circus we went, up, we yeah. went up on the hill. That was, that was I, a, I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah, huh? We went, we, we, we went to the circus too? Yeah, I went? Yeah, they, they disguised it. We saw Corey. Oh, we saw, oh, you're talking that was, about that was, the that was circus. That was Wednesday. Circus. That was Wednesday. Oh, that, was, that, that, that was Wednesday. I know, wasn't it was so you know, this time that, of year they're having a lot of circus, so I was trying to <laughs> oh, define oh, this the Universal Soul you know, Circus. You talking about? Oh, this wasn't Universal Soul. No. Universal Circus. Who? What did Univer You said Universal Soul. Okay. Universal Circus? Universal Soul Circus. Universal Soul Circus. It wasn't that Universal one. Soul. So it wasn't you guys, so you guys is cool. But it was a circus in we're town. We're helping them. And they were talking about reparations. It was On Juneteenth. On Juneteenth. It was, I call it a circus, and, and it was a circus. You know something? It was a smoke screen to act like they care, to act like they are about you, but it was still staged it was staged and 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 you know something and then they got these uh 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 you know something i'm gonna say it and you you know you know what you are you house niggers mm. niggers no you house errs so i cut off the other part and it, we just that's the new one y'all y'all errs y'all house errs not house errs, but house errs, E-R-S. Okay. Because there's a bunch of them. Okay. They had some of them sitting up there. And, you know, you errs, when they throw us in change, they throw in, yo, in, in change. You're going to be right next to me, and then you'll be looking at them, talking about, what I do? And you know what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to be trying to get you off of my chain. And, no, and, you're going to be like Coleman Hughes. <laughs> Coleman Hughes running through. I don't through. be like no dang on Coleman Hughes. <laughs> not, not you. <laughs> I'm talking about first and spirit. Who? All the people. Well, never mind. Okay, I ain't being like no Coleman Hughes because you know something now. Uh, black authority. You know we'll something? get them. We'll get, we'll get them. Black them. media. You know something? We need to get the word out to our folks. And black people, y'all need to wake the heck up. I'm serious, man. It's a war going on. It's being waged against you, and you know some. I, I, actually, I was watching kind of stuff all day today, and uh, and this weekend, and uh, I was trying to become, and or I'm trying to become now because I don't want to, you know. But yet and still, uh, you know, some old folks uh, sold us out where we could be much more f further along. <clears throat> and again, the circus was about reparations, and and. Uh, we had a show earlier concerning that, uh, uh, and and you know something, and, and, and but see, this is just for a study. Yeah. So so it's not they that are. they're going to do nothing. <clears throat> it's just for a study. Should we should we waste taxpayers' money on a study? They already doing. Hell, y'all wasting money that send uh, 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 sun kiss orange to play golf. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> okay. <But> anyway. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's enough for me. Uh, but anyway, I, I want to let you guys know about uh, Bruce Gilmore. Uh, he had a show on, on the Vox Wave program, and it, he died uh, on the 5th of this month. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to let you know and, and let his family know that, you know, we're sending a shout-out to the family. Uh, we want to let you guys know. And if you have some information, look, it's a $25,000 reward. And you know something? Let me tell y'all something about this snitch and stuff. You know what I mean? Okay, if you do some shiggity in front of me and they got me incarcerated, they got you incarcerated. Because, you know, <laughs> hey, look, I ain't taking the fall for nobody. 
and and so you know something now. Okay, it's the street code. Hold on, hold on. Pause right there. It's a life. That's a matter of fact. It's a life. And what you need to do is you need to put your face in the spot of that victim and how your family would feel. Your daughter, your son, your mama, your daddy, your grandma, your whomever that you care about. You would want everybody to talk, squeal, run, tell. You'd want that for anything. And I, I must say this. Any person who shoots an unarmed person, I don't care if you're a police officer or whatever. You're, you're a palm, coward. You're a coward. You jive. Anybody who drive by, you weak. Man, get out you're the car. Coward. If you really want to be body like that, get out the car. Put these up. Say, come on, man. Right. Be a man me. about it. Win or lose mm. or draw and keep it moving. Right. And don't come back saying, oh, I got to come back because I, yeah. I got, you know, I got these. Oh, 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 but we're oh, on this different you, thing you, now. You I don't know what it is. With, with four or five for it it's, one. It's like um, the, the courage bus left the scene or something. You know, everybody think that they're hard because you carry a piece of steel. That piece of steel was made by somebody who doesn't even like you, doesn't even care about you, who wants you to not let yourself. They, they want you to do that. So, so they are feeding you. And you, you know some. I was going to say something about uh, 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 the mentally challenged. And first, let me tell the mentally challenged, and somebody explained it to them, but anyway, the mentally challenged is, is these folks that's doing the stuff. And, 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 and there's nothing against the mentally challenged. I'm talking about the mentally retarded that's out there doing crazy sh You know what I mean? That's, that, that can't see this mess going on. I'm trying so hard not to cuss. Well, we're going to help you out. Let's switch off, switch gears. But anyway, okay. Oh, we're going to switch gears. Okay, I'm going to turn it over talk about the back to uh, Twyla and Shirley, and they're going to explain you, you, you to you. Getting, you can <laughs> Look, bring it down. Well, Look, I'm not mentally challenged, you know, because I know what's going on. And you know something? They cannot pull that on me, and I'm not going to go against another black man to appease a white man that's paying you not even peanuts. You getting a shell. So if you eating a shell, Ooh. you got to be mentally deficient. Def no, no. Yeah, that means you no. lacking something. Yeah, you lacking a brain. But oh, anyway, okay, I digress. Okay. But anyway, that's guys, what we saw on the panel. Yeah. Please and there thank was you. No that's what we saw on the panel. Yeah, exactly. What At time? What, what time? No. What time did you get there that morning? Tell what time you got there. Um, got there about um, six o'clock a.m. And I got there 7.20, 7.30, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ladies, and explain the fiasco that y'all witnessed. Well. No. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Matter of fact, y'all both can speak at the same time. I don't, you know, get. H.R. 40 is a bill proposition to try to study the need for the United States of America to pay reparations to those who are our ancestral slave descendants if you had relatives that were enslaved in this country in some capacity during this 1619. And I say before 1619, so you know I, I, people don't listen. They had Spanish colonies back in the 1500s down in Florida. So mm -hmm. from that point on, that's when the Africans first landed here enslaved. Or not just Africans, but people that were looked like me, walk like me, talk like me, not the language, were enslaved by those Spaniards, all the way up into, they say 1865, but that's even a lie too, because we were enslaved beyond that. 1866, there were people that were still enslaved on those native reservations because they refused to let them go. Yes, five civilized tribes enslaved black people in this country. You need to start reading more, you need to start studying more, you need to start learning more. Set that book that you got in school down. Okay, because somebody wrote it, and their name's called Colonizer, and they're trying to colonize your mind with indoctrinating you with something that's not true, and then you walk and pass it off as fact. And but, I know no, that. It's, 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 it's like they tell you, and, and see, but they say it real fast. History right. is his story. His story. Their story. That was, that was, yeah. You know, two syllables. Yeah, yeah. His story. But that, but what they did was... We were up there early because we had heard that there was going to be a bus loads coming from New York, which did. Mm -hmm. um, bus loads from Philadelphia, which did. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were members that had come from that represented ADOS. That I guess everybody that I saw when, when you got there, that's everybody was mostly mostly ADOS. Yeah, ADOS. People, yeah. Okay. So then there were other people from other groups and people who weren't attached to any groups that were coming in, and the place started getting kind of full. 
-hmm. But initially it was kind of like, you know, kind of trickling in slow. I don't even know when everybody started filling up because we were, the door was right here and we were right here. But when we saw people starting to come closer, we said, oh, we got to get closer to the door. <laughs> and, don't, and don't forget, they had put chairs out there in the hallway. For the, the elders for, and, well, and, no, and for people who were there early. For yeah. anybody who yeah, wants to sit down. down. So it was kind of orderly. We had it orderly. It was orderly. Yeah, yeah, it was orderly when they started putting the chairs out. But then, I think as they got close to, what, 9? Yeah, about 9. 9.45? <clears throat> it was awful. Groundswell of people. You start yeah. hearing more voices. So we started looking at our folks saying, you know, people that we knew that were there with us early in mm -hmm. the day, um, hey, come on, you know, let's, you know, let's get close, you know, we got to get tight closer. Cause you, yep. Because instead of them being in line, they were just like mobbing behind you in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the aisles and, and mm -hmm. in the whole, the, uh, whole, uh, the hall. whole hallway. Yeah. The, but see, this was another set, too. This is a trick. This was a game. Mm -hmm. They knew there was going to be a ton of people there. They had yeah. police officers there that couldn't even control the crowd. I had a white megaphone, <laughs> took my megaphone out. I did. Yeah. And she sure, she sure, sure did. did. She had the megaphone. Sure did. Yeah. And told them because the police officer next to me said, if people don't get in the line, no one's going to be able to get in. Now, I didn't come here to not get in. You understand? Mm -hmm. So they were not talking to me. They were not talking to Shirley. Mm -mm. They were not talking to those of us and, that came and, early. And don't forget, they had, our, we, by us getting there at 6, security pretty much had already saw us. Because we were like the only ones there, except for about four yeah. or five other people. Yep. So how could they miss us? So they knew. They knew they we knew. was there We knew first. we were there. And then I do the megaphone thing, and I, you know, somebody said, oh, she's a Marine. The one, she's oh. a Marine. Yeah, okay. Then I said, I gave the instruction. They told it we need to get in single file line. They already said that if we don't get in single file line, no one's getting in. Then some black man, and you know who you are. I don't know who you are because I ain't bothered with you, but you know who you are. How much you got paid? He says, <laughs> how, do we, how do we make a line? How do we make a single file line? See what I mean? It's just the yeah, simple stuff. Now, stupid. see, if I was a person to go to back and forth and petty, I would have, you know, responded to him. I looked at Shirley. <laughs> I looked at the other children. I said, oh, I'm not doing this. I said, I put my microphone back in my bag. I said, I got my spot, so I don't know what's yeah. up with him. And guess what? I got in and he didn't. That's now, right. So, like, that's but right. the crazy thing was the police officers tried to get everybody together. Here they go, I, you need to get over. You need to get over. I, you need to get over. But I, it's their fault. It's their fault. Because when they saw people lining up and people getting bigger, they should have started, they should have organized everyone. Then they should have said, hey, they, people, you need. But they weren't even there. No, they no. Didn't show they were much later. That's what I'm saying. But they, but, they, but they, look. I don't remember, know. There were only a couple, couple uh, that were there. We the got there. on the hill that worked there. They yeah. kept coming in and, and out. out. There was well, never no security. Nope. They would just come to, nope. uh, uh, what do you call media? Yep. In and out, in, in and, and out, out the door. Yep. That's where the confusion really started because then people started saying, Oh, I'm I'm media. I'm media. Oh, but I fixed that too because see, <laughs> Shirley was on this side of the door. So if you open the door, she was right behind the door, right mm -hmm. there at it. Mm -hmm. I'm at this door. You can't get in because this is the only one that opened up this way. Yeah, they had me so uh, Shirley was pinned up. One girl told me she was part of media. Yeah. I said, uh, um, I had asked the young lady who was handling media. I said, she said this is the last person for media for right now. I said, okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. So I was taking off for her cue. So she didn't say this person. This person was there when she walked in. Mm -hmm. So said, I positioned my body. I was moving my body. No, That's you're not going right. to get it. And then one girl said, I'm with so-and-so inside there. I said, well, you need to text them. Mm -hmm. And then they need to respond. And then when somebody comes in the door, I'll move. And I didn't move. I just ignored. And every time someone tried to position, I moved my body and turned. Like, mm -hmm. And I leaned back. They leaned on me. I leaned back. It was just like, it was crazy because it was inconsiderate. And I was really getting frustrated. I said, no, this didn't have to be this way because you knew you weren't here. People come in the last minute, figure they're just going to yep. come and swamp at the door. I told a police officer, one police officer, I said, let me tell you who was here. She was here. And I started pointing out who was mm -hmm. here. I said, now, we were here. I said, so, and we didn't come here for all this, and they need to move. He said, I'll make sure that you all get in, which he did. Yeah. He was true to his word. So I wish I remember Shout out name. to the black Shout officer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Was I was going to ask, was he, was he a black, black dude? Yeah. Because okay. after, after uh, uh, Twyla got in, and then he said, you next. Shout See. out to that brother. And he, and he made mean, sure. He made yeah. sure. Yeah. 
that he held firm what we said. Mm -hmm. And I, I, it, was, it, it was appreciated and, because it was, it was. And to say that is just to say how unorganized it was with that whole situation because we were already there, we were first, and we shouldn't have had to even go through that. But the people were so, I mean, it rude. was very rude. Shut it was, it, it, was, it was awful. Okay. I, I wasn't there, and, and, and y'all were there, <clears throat> but because it wasn't an incident, uh, incident I kind of give black folks a little shout out for restraint, I suppose. I don't, I don't know. They was still kind of acting goofy, but there wasn't an incident. Because if it was an incident, that would made the news more than the doggone hearing. Well, you know what? That's a good point. Uh, that is yeah. a good it, point. It, it wasn't no... Yeah, so uh, I kind of give them a but, shout but, out But for what them. they did was they also, in a hurry, got the people in those extra overflow in rooms, overflow too, because they had three overflow. So if you had three overflow rooms, that meant you planned for an onslaught, which meant you should have had a security. They knew. I'm a foreign police officer, and I'll tell you they this. Knew. You should have been posted up right when people start, start to come inside the building. You should have had posted up so constantly remind people, mm -hmm. stay, to the, stay to the left of the hall, stay to the mm -hmm. left of the hall, because people were, it was a <laughs> business, it's Operation yeah. Hours, yeah. Mm -hmm. and there were other offices down the hall, mm -hmm. and they didn't. So we get inside there, and what I'm going to tell you that really ticked me off first, before we even talk about the panel, what ticked me off was how many reserved seats that were in there. Good point. I think that was designed, because it was more seats for media and so-called organizations and you can probably count the people that just public uh, people, what, maybe 10, 15, 20? I'll say about 20. About, wow. about, about 20, yes. So, so, about 20 so again, like that you was were designed. saying, it's, 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 it, it was staged. It was Stage. like, okay, this spot for media, we got the Congress people or mm -hmm. wherever they were sitting. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and like, so, okay, the people that is affecting us, mm -hmm. yeah. 10 spots. That's right. Wow. And then they and then they didn't let us in at one time. Mm -hmm. It was uh, four, and then I was number five, mm -hmm. and there was five and some else going to me. And then uh, then Shirley came in. I came in. And then we, uh, didn't even, we didn't even end up sit, sitting nope, together. She I was, was in the behind, back somewhere. Yeah. You were a couple of seats ahead of me. Yeah. Rose ahead of me. Yeah. And um, wow. Dr. Alicia ended up finally getting in. Mm -hmm. I was like, dang, good. Um, did, 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 did the nun? Did she get in? I I I saw her sitting over where her tables were. So I say yes. Okay. Yes. Because I kept telling them, I said, there's a Caucasian uh, nun. She's not in the habit. She had salt pepper. She's a, she was a freedom fighter. She was a freedom rider. She, when she heard King in the early 60s, she was convicted then. And she'd been rolling with Dr. King and with the Civil Rights Movement since 65, gone to jail in the whole nine yards. So she, because I didn't know who she was the first time. You know, we're kind of looking when new people come, kind of like, we need to see let who me, this okay. is over That's here. Let me cut you off. Let me ask you all this. <clears throat> now, with the various organizations that mm -hmm. we're familiar with, uh, uh, um, I didn't watch the whole thing because, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm glad I didn't because mm. it was a bunch of garbage. Uh, uh, but the various organizations, the so-called, well, anybody speak from the Black Carcass, uh, the, no. the various organizations, NAACP, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, the organizations that you may know, the organizations that you may know, did any of those people, they got a, they had a, a, a wagon, uh, uh, and use your imagination, uh, an ex-football player, uh, Lethal Weapon 4, <laughs> <laughs> and who else? Oh, 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 did Corey. You? Corey did his two minutes. And, and, and the lawyer, that lawyer, he was uh, the lawyer, the lawyer on the end. He was the last one. Oh, the coach. White the, guy, the, the white the, guy. Oh, he, oh was, white he, he was from Car he was actually from the Caribbean. Oh, Caribbeans. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's, okay. he's from. He was from oh, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, 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 coach. Coach, is that who he was? Yeah. Uh, he he had a, 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 oh, a, a pretty decent thing, but uh, uh, Corey, Malvo. he did his 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 two minute. Oh, Malvo. You know, mm -hmm. uh, my two minute in intermission, my Negro wow. intermission. For two minutes, let me be a Negro for two two minutes. Uh, huh? Black folks, uh, we need reparations, and uh, yeah, I, I I'm appalled. Okay, I'm gonna turn back black again. I mean, listen. He, oh, my uh, two minutes of er earnings. He, he, he <laughs> you know what? It was it was just uh, it was a waste of time. Yeah. In far as when you talk about results, real results, it was a waste of time because the people should have been there to have spoken weren't there. weren't there. The one thing they didn't have, they didn't have Dr. Sandy Darity. They should have had him there. Mm -hmm. They should have had Dr. Claude Anderson, Anderson, which he was the first, he was the person who wrote the first 
um, what do you call it? Um, affirmative affirmative action, 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 plan, action plan in, in America. Wow. So, yeah, they 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 should have had uh, 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 Attorney Ajoa there because Attorney Joa had been on the panel years ago. I seen talk about reparations. Um, in Rochester, University of Rochester, there was a, a panel I went to see back in like 2002 with the case for reparations. Mm -hmm. None of those people were there. They should have had the, uh, mental practitioners. They should have had psychiatrists, psychologists, sociologists, economists, yeah, historians, yeah. educators. Yeah. They should have yeah. went the yeah. gamut yeah. so you can see the whole stain of the whole cost of yeah. this yeah. inflicted atrocity that you did. You kidnap people, or you purchase people, or you enslave people, like the Haitians that were here. That let me. 1775, there were about a hundred Haitians that volunteered to come help these jive people on this shore fight in the Revolutionary War. They were freed black men, landowners. The fight was down called the Siege of Savannah, down in Savannah, Georgia. Now, they didn't win that battle. It wasn't their fault. But because they were still a colony of France, the French wouldn't allow these men to return back home. So they were sent to France, to the Grenadine, parts of the island, to Grenada. And some of them ended up having to stay here in Charleston, South Carolina, and became slaves. So if you didn't have anyone from that part of the world who might have been related to one of those men that end up getting trapped here, trying to help this country. You didn't have anyone talking about a long-term effect, the psychological, mm -hmm. social, mental, physical anguish mm -hmm. that the slavery incurred or impressed upon us after the quote-unquote emancipation, which really didn't emancipate us. And then it was a proclamation, but I don't know what it emancipated because it, it didn't. It didn't. It wasn't us. for our inclusion. No, and, and well, what Lincoln wanted, the, he said. Yeah, we'll free him, but guess what Lincoln wanted? Lincoln wanted to send you back out of this country. He said, hmm. this, the, he can be free, but we don't want you here. We'll pay you $100 you, well, to go to shoot, Haiti and $100 to go to Africa. That was a bad idea, considering what well, we had to go through to stay. Well, here's, but, 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 but here's <laughs> the deal. You might vote ticket, man. But what are you going to do? When you, but see, if you gave me $100, and I, I might have been the second generation of my family that was born on this shore, oh, well, okay. I don't now, have a relationship now, to now. anyone in Haiti. At, at I don't have point, the language yeah, anymore, yeah, yeah, so I don't speak yeah. whatever language that was spoken yeah. at the mm -hmm. time was French. Um, I don't have any relationship to anyone on any, any country in Africa. I don't know where in Africa I would go. Who do I belong to? Am I, am I African? Am I more? You know, I don't, you just be sending someone somewhere that they don't know. So, of course, mm -hmm. most of them didn't take them up on offer because go where but then they had that field order that special field order number 15. people stop saying that we were promised 40 acres of milk that's a lie from the pits of hell it's a lie oh, it's, a lie. it's a lie it's a lie it's a lie they too. kept quoting uh, king all everybody's quoting king and you know what they were doing they were quoting king 63 king they were quote martin luther who, king who, quotes who, who oh you know everybody on the panel kept made a quote about and oh, martin luther oh, king oh, said, the panel yeah. now. Okay. And, and even though those that were supposed to be the 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 um the the witnesses the witness everyone's quoting king 63 king you didn't quote 65 king the 65 king didn't get invited back to the white house anymore 65 king ticked off lyndon bain johnson so bad he never got him back in the white house ever again <laughs> 66 I, I, king was on some some different stuff and 67 king said where's the check and that's what got 68 King and 68 killed. King said, uh-uh. They said, no, enough But you didn't enough. bring them quotes. Yeah, 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 you didn't yeah, bring yeah. them good quotes. Yeah, you didn't bring yeah, them yeah, quotes. Yeah, yeah, we all yeah. want to get well, content of the character. I, I just want to um, say, too, also what I feel about that hearing, felt about that hearing. Um, one thing that it did, I think, is that it incited a lot of people to come out. And I didn't think that the... People on the hill expected that many people to show up, and I, I, I think that um, what has happened, which was last week at the hearing, for the people that showed up and the people who it was live stream by the way, everybody can go and, and pull it up on live stream, that people now, particularly black people, we can need we need to start to understand policy politics. You know, because that, that was like an education for us, for the ones who've never been on the Hill, yeah. who's never sat at a hearing, 
So those are the positive things we can get out of that. And then now we know it was a smoke screen, and now we know we got to do something. We got to do something because that was not representing our people, and Adolf. You know, uh, uh, Cheryl, uh, uh, it, it did polarize us because mm. we did come together. Yes. Uh, uh, you, 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 yes. You know what I mean? So, like you said, that can't be overlooked. Yeah. And and and, 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 and so, but you know, so let's not stop there. Right. Uh, and and again, see, again, we let them set the narrative. Yes. And you saw you saw what that narrative was. Yes. You know, don't pacify me. Uh, uh, you know something. And it, like I said, it was just a smoke screen. Right. And and now, okay, I'm a I'm a, I'm a, 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 a nobody, but let me get up there and talk. Put me on the panel. Well, there were nobodies up there anyway. That's right. Well, so that's right. I mean, I mean, I, right. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest because there was a young, and I tell you something, black women who are in this this feminist move, get off the bus. My gosh, it's not for we're you. We're not, yeah, and I'm gonna tell you, it's not it's for. It's, it's we be enough. doing that stuff. We did that stuff. We we had to do the things we did, always because the way that our family structure was set up in this country by design. So there's nothing for us to gain. And a perfect example is when we were up there, they, they, even the women that were supposed to be, oh, yeah, yeah, we're in the sisterhood, they didn't even call on the two women that were there to witness. They, Dr. Malvo got asked one question, and then right. Ms. Brown, the writer, who was sympathetic toward reparations, who had a lot to say. You really, if you get a chance, listen to what she was saying. She said that she was from a family with privilege. And then some way she was doing some research one time and she found out that her family were slave owners. And it bothered her. It pricked her conscience. Now, there are people wow. there whose conscience is pricked. Her yeah. conscience pricked. And so she made it her life journey to do everything to help restore black folks. Now, we are black folks that don't try to restore black folks. But this woman had this to say. And what they did was they snuffed her. So they didn't want to hear what she had to say. They didn't want to hear what Dr. Malvo had to say. So they were asking questions back and forth around. Well, they asked the preacher the question, Danny Glover. They went to Ta-Nehisi. They went back to that knucklehead jerk Coleman Hughes, that yeah. pukey 23-year-old child who doesn't know that his nose still runs. He needs the Kleenex. That child. So yeah. they kept going back to them, asking them these softball, I don't know what kind of questions, these, these subjective questions. That football player... Go back to your Mormon church. There's no disrespecting me as a Mormon. That's what you are. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. You don't know anything about, well, you know, if we if we just try. My dad always said, try. I don't want to hear what your daddy said. I don't want to hear what your dad said because your dad doesn't help just dictate policy. He gave the Rodney King speech. He, he gave something can, beyond. Can we just all get along? He, he, he went he somewhere else with me. Your... I was but tired anyway. of hearing him. Because, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, because he kept talking about what he didn't have any frame of reference about. You don't have a frame of reference. There was nothing talking about solutions. Um, Dr. Malvo, she started um, making some comments about um, numbers and figures. The issue I, I had with her, yeah, yeah, but the issue I had with her was that she said, I'm not looking for a check. And, and, I, I, don't and, I, and I don't think anybody should want a check either. And then the, the, the nice, good preacher, well, you know, we're not talking about pay for, for, for uh, money. The, the, the football player, no money. Um, the Coleman Hughes. Coleman Hughes. Uh, well, you know, um, only ones who were injured. Support reparations. Yeah, only ones that were injured. They're not alive anymore. Well, you're a liar, and the truth can't be found in any part of that skull of yours called the body. Well, they, the they were saying they, they did a, a little thing. Uh, the Black Authority did a thing on on this. What's his name? Well, Jason he got, Black. Yeah, Jason, Jason Black. Black. Oh, but, yeah, but he got oh, for treating the sheep. Oh, he, shout he, out to, he, to, to, yeah, to, to yeah, King Flex. Uh, uh, absolutely. But they did a thing on the little 23 year older. And like I said, now everybody that, that was sitting on that panel or particular that had something to say, you know something, they did their investigation on, on you know, them because they don't want no radical people, you know, on the panel. Mm. And they showed the background of this dude, this dude on the subway in his mm. doggone underwear. He's a rapper. Oh, he's Humping a pole or swinging on the pole. Yeah, we call it what pole dancing. Pole, uh, well, okay. Well. In his drawers. In his drawers, yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. So, I, I mean, but he's up there supposedly representing Nice job, you and conservative I. Oh, let, people. Let me cut you off for just a second. And I'm not a liberal. So uh, 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 I, I, I want to uh, uh, send a shout out. I, I feel like royalty because I'm sitting between two Nubian queens. And, and so I wanted to let y'all know that. Okay. Oh, you know, I, I want to share that sentiment, but I got caught up in my little rant, and so I had to. I want to say that now. 
two Let beautiful uh, Nubian ladies that, can, you know. Can I say, um, mm -hmm. I want to say you. that because of this, the black media today, that has pushed the media for black people, the understanding that we don't need or we don't have to listen to the white media or the mass media anymore. Mm -hmm. And that story about the brother and his draws, I forget his name. Coleman uh, Hughes. Coleman, Coleman Hughes, Hughes. That wouldn't have never came out at the white media. Never. Yeah. Well, mainstream so media is, has a continuous own narrative. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is where we are today. And we need to continue to support black media. And businesses. And businesses. And whatever well. it is, and black. Whatever. You, you, you know what I mean? We, we need to take the bull by the horns and, 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 and lead the direction. For, because, again, right now, they are blatantly mm. telling you, we don't give a damn about you. Right. Uh, uh, the, the slave owners got reparations. Sure. Uh, the Jews got reparations. The Japanese got re uh, reparations. I got that, you. That, the plane that they shot down, whoever was on that dang on plane, uh, uh, got reparations. Everybody got something but black folks. Let me let me get right here. Um, I'm, I'm gonna mention her name only one time, mm. and I'm not gonna mention her name anymore. And I only mention it because some of you were gonna go look at Laura Ingram. Oh. I want you all to oh, wow. stop going to her site. Stop mentioning that woman's name. Stop going on. She's getting clicks and more views and this and that. Yeah. By the way, we need you to like, share, subscribe. We got um, Connected Bridge on, on YouTube, ConnectedBridge.com. Go to Connected Bridge on Instagram and T Limbs on Twitter at Right Shante. Now, please subscribe. Um, subscribe, subscribe, share. Put your share. brick in the foundation. Yeah. Please, please, please. But now, this chick says that, uh, what she said, it's called conquest. I'm using a quote. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. We won, you lost. That's mm. it. And she used Trump's no do overs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she said that the Democrats' support are replacing, the Democrat supporters are, quote, replacing the current American population with new immigrants, unquote. The Democrat supporters, quote, are replacing the current American population with new immigrants, end quote. It's called conquest. We won, you lost, that's all. Now, she says that she's a Christian. Now, if you're a Christian, that's a bogus sentence because there's no such thing as we won, you lost. Because yes. if that be the case, if you believe in, if you believe in, 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 um, in a Babylonian story, the Epic of Gilgamesh, which is the same story as Noah and the flood, the great flood, okay? The earth was wiped away, and then there were eight that were spared and replenished. But... Remember, conquest, which meant it should be wiped off no way. There's no do-over. Um, mm. When you had the tribes that were inside the, um, the, the desert wandering around for 40 years, waiting for everybody to die, that wouldn't have been a do-over. Because everybody could have died out and that would mean none. No generations passing on. So this thing called a conquest is bogus. This is just a, a Eurocentric excuse to make that that you don't want to pay. But here's, I'm going to show about this, tell you about this. New York City, this is when black people in America lost out. Now we'll get back to that field order in, in a few seconds here. New York City draft riot in 1863. The white working class were scared about the influx of free black southerners that were going to be coming up north. So they, they had, um, they torched the homes and businesses for four days. They lynched black men. They t burnt down the colored orphanage that had over 250 children. That was in 1863. That's how scared people are of us. They had the Atlanta race riots in September 1906. Burnt down families that were black, burnt down homes and businesses. And East St. Louis massacre, hmm. 1917. 2,000 per week black people were migrating there because they were getting jobs in the aluminum factories and stuff and working for American Steel. Now. The Caucasians there were scared about wage and job security. So they had a war. The National Guard came in on it. They started, they, were, they had a, there was a Caucasian guy who went through a black neighborhood and started shooting folks. So then the black cats saw this car that they thought was that car that was coming back through. And they shot these two dudes that were in the car. Come and find out those two guys were actually police officers. 
Mm. So that mm. jumped off. Mm. And so, <laughs> okay? So they were mm. fighting back and forth. So it was like a big mess. Mm. But it ended up leaving over 6,000 black folks homeless. Mm. Okay? Mm. So then you turn around, Red Summer. That was in 1919. You had riots in D.C. Mm -hmm. um, there were there were better. Watch this. Veterans were coming back to D.C. and they couldn't even get jobs. So they were on the street, Pennsylvania Avenue, in their uniforms, panhandling. Mm -hmm. There were veterans that were Caucasian in uniforms and weapons, shoot people in the street. What? Chicago riots, August 1919, left a thousand black homes burnt down. There was a riot in Knoxville, Tennessee, also in August 1919. Took the Tennessee National Guard. And black business snipers, black folks were snipers. They broke in some place and found some weapons. So they were tagging, waxing, and tacking. But until they brought the National Guard in, they were, they were doing their thing. But what happened was that they took the bodies of those that they killed and they dumped them in the Tennessee River. And then the rest of them they took and buried them in a mass grave outside the city. Then you turn around after then, you had uh, Rosewood in uh, 1923 where they mm -hmm. burnt the whole city down and lynched the men that were there. Mm -hmm. And then of course before then, a couple years before then you had Tulsa and that was uh, from the 31st of May to 1 June. They dropped the bomb. They dropped they dro the bomb. bomb. And you they already know the song the by the Gap Band. You they dropped, the, dropped bomb the bomb on us. They dropped the <laughs> yeah, bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that's was, that that's urban terrorism. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm gonna say is this, and this is ambitious. People better be careful in the climate that we're living in right now. Mm. Because there's a lot of people out here that are veterans who took a sworn or took an affirmation to defend this country against terrorists, foreign, and domestic. domestic. Right. That bomb and all these acts were acts of right. terrorism. And people who are desperate do desperate things. And I'm not inflaming anything. I'm not inciting anything. I'm just sounding the alarm that people better see and wake up and see what's really going on. And you better be careful because you can't, I can't expect things to continue going the way they're going and something not going to jump off. <laughs> I'm an expectation of something because it's like that that tea kettle on the stove, you know. After it, it gets boils boiling to a certain, and, yeah. and then when it gets to a point, yeah. it starts to whistle. Mm. Yeah. Now, <laughs> y'all better hear the whistle. Uh, uh, that's what jumped off oh, in, in L.A., because it was so much going on in L.A., and then when they acquitted them officers, mm -hmm. L.A. exploded. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you know what I mean? So now I, I want to say this right quick, too, um, uh, to the so-called Christians out there on the hill. Now, and they see this stuff going on, and now according to your Christianity, the Bible says the enemy or the devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Mm. Hmm, somebody has a legacy of killing, stealing, and destroying. Mm -hmm. As she said, conquest. Mm -hmm. How about that one? She talks about how we shouldn't get paid, but let me let me run some quick numbers and then I'm gonna turn it back over to you all. Mm -hmm. 1998, the United States pledged to get, to pay 1.32 billion with a B billion dollars to Japanese Americans mm -hmm. and their heirs. Mm. So if my my granddaddy was the one that was interred, and my mama's dead. Guess who's getting cash? Guess who got the cash? Their heirs. Plus. Without a study. Plus. No, uh -oh. no. That's right. Uh -oh. Thank you. Without a study. Plus. Without a study. $1.65 billion was previously already given to 81,278 claimants already. So they got almost, what, almost $3 billion. Okay? Then in 2009... We gave $3.4 billion to Native tribes because the United States profited from the lands, okay? Hmm. Then in 2010, Native Indian tribes got 4.5 in reparations, and they also had to split that up with the black farmers. President Obama was then made an honorary member of the Crow Nation. Ah! <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> Why the crows? The crow nation. The crow nation. What the crows? You know what I think about? What I think about? What? John, 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 John Stark. John Stark? John Snow. What I think about crows. Oh, <laughs> Game of Thrones? Yeah. <laughs> so, October 2015, <laughs> President Barack Hussein Obama II gave, in his words, assistance to Holocaust survivors and continued Germany reparations from, from 1952, which was to help with 
the infrastructure in Israel. And this is what he said, the reason why he gave this uh, assistance, what he called it. He said, because there's a, and I'm quoting, quarter of them who live below the poverty line, there's about 150,000 of them that were 65 years or older. And so this was also backed by Biden in 2013. And then they even assigned a special envoy, Abiba uh, Sufyan, to oversee his money. He gave all this money in 2015 to a Holocaust survivors who, below, who were below the poverty line. Mm. What about the Maat? What about the survivors of that who stayed behind the poverty line? Who were born behind the poverty line and still behind live the poverty under the poverty yeah. line, <laughs> die under the poverty line, die more in debt because you got funeral directors that make you pay astronomical prices for a plot of land that's not even an acre. You can't grow anything on it. Just, mm. just for something else to just return back to it. Okay. Then he turned Some around. Dirt. Then they approved <laughs> 90 claims <laughs> for 11 and for 11 million dollars for former World War II prisoners who were carried to Nazi camps for mm. death. He gave a 90, 192 million dollars in 2016 to 17 native tribes. Laura, never gonna say her last name. Laura, and all those who think, and Mitch McConnell, mm -hmm. who think that we don't want money. You haven't talked to us. I don't know about those that were up there on that hill, mm -hmm. but you didn't talk about giving it to HBCU, they're talking about, oh, well, you put yeah. in schools and, 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 and better neighborhoods and, and better schools and better, don't tell me what's better. Give me my money and I can make it better myself. You didn't tell that to the Jews. You didn't tell it to the Native Americans. Mm -hmm. You didn't tell it to the Japanese Americans. You didn't tell anybody else, but you act like you're scared to give black people butt in the head. Some people will mess it up, yeah. So they mess up, they mess up, it's on them. You know, sometimes you say that to me. But you can't tell me how you're going to give me what is mine. What is owed. And so for... I don't know what's wrong with black people thinking, oh, we don't want money. Yes, we do. We don't want talk tangibles. for me. We want tangibles. You don't, you don't talk fact, for me. You I got children, children grandchildren. Said, Come on. Tangibles is, we, we need tangibles. Right. And you black and attorneys that are, that, that are out here that are sitting there, you need to really look into the constitutionality of it all. See, you got too many out there, people out there that are professionals that can actually piece this apart, peel apart. Don't just stand and protest. Do something. We need... Everybody should be boycotting Fox, everything. Mm -hmm. See, we haven't done anything since the uh, Montgomery bus now, boycott. Now, I have something here. Um, this is the uh, U.S. Constitution and uh, Amendment 14, Section 4. I'm gonna, I want you to I, I dissect that. Explain to me what you think that means to you. Okay. The validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law, including debts incurred for payment of pensions and bounties for services in suppressing insurrection or rebellion, should not be questioned. Go ahead. But that's talking about the validity of the debt for pensions and bounties and services in suppressing insurrection or rebellion. So that's the main people who are trying to do an uprising to the country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm, go ahead. But neither the United States nor any state shall assume or pay any debt or obligation incurred in aid of insurrection or rebellion against the United States or any claim for the loss of emancipation of any slave. But all such debts, obligations, and claims shall be held illegal and void. But this... Now, explain, now did you... Go ahead. Go ahead. So what they're trying to say in short is that Loss for or emancipation of any slave. What they're saying here is they're saying they're not going to pay for any to free That's any right. slave. That's why I wanted but, you to but, 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 but you're not paying to free a slave. That's right. You're paying those who were enslaved and now are free, or quote unquote, who were quote unquote freed. <laughs> so this, you can't even hide behind this. That, because you're saying uh -huh. that, that they will not pay for the claim of loss or emancipation. They're not, pay for, they're not going to pay for the freedom of any uh -huh. slave. And you didn't. So that's right. You, you held your word. You didn't. Well, but you pay, did. They, but you pay, did. They, they paid the slave owners uh, 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 for their loss. DC Compensation Act. Yeah, and what they know. did is they give up to three hundred dollars. They give up to three hundred dollars. Yeah. Week. We are getting ready to hit that button. Our time. This is just the first part of this this wonderful discussion, because we're going to pick up on it. Uh, uh, next week, we have some members from ADOS. Mm -hmm. I expect oh, to have someone me. from... Uh, uh, explain to them what ADOS, that, that folks may not know what um, those... Uh, 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 American Descendants of Slaves. Slaves. And we all 
uh, that we all, who had relatives that were on the plantation enslaved, we are American descendants, descendants of, of slaves. slaves. We, but not everyone who was enslaved was an American descendant of slave. Not everybody on the plantation, not everybody, on, not everybody that was enslaved here was an American descendant of slave. Right, right. Um, so there are there other ancestral lineages in this country that we have yet to even know because we just don't know what we don't know. But we have, uh, hopefully there will be someone here from Encobra. We do have someone that's coming from uh, Afro-descendant nation. Is Amy? Uh, is she, yeah, yeah, yeah these, okay. Black, black Power. Uh, black, black Power. Like that, yeah. um, and, um, oh yeah, Ados. Go ahead, Ados. Uh, Looking for a person to come from the new Black Panther Party. Okay. Can um, I say something? Sure. Um, I think there's a big confusion going on and um, with this identity uh, with black people. We, we're talking about the American descendants of slaves. We're talking about black uh, Native Americans. We're talking about indigenous people, aboriginals. I had one sister say originees. Oh, my God. We need to get this straight. We're just trying to get paid tangibles. Yes. This makes a very good point. And okay. see, the individuals that we're going to have here next week, we, they're, they come from different perspectives. But mm -hmm. we're not going to be here. This chess show is not yeah. going to be a show about arguing about what you agree disagree with because mm -hmm. that's not where we're here. We're not here to tear anybody down. We're here to uplift each other. We need to come together at the table. What we're going to talk <laughs> about is what we saw this past week, mm -hmm. what we didn't see, and what we should have seen, and what we, where we need to do in our individual circles and how we need to come back together as a united front. There are some people that say we should be on a more pan-African approach. There are some that say we should be solely for, for this particular group. The bottom line is this. We need to come together to exactly. one common goal, one and exactly. that is to, to exactly. be, have, be reimbursed for unpaid labor in this country, whichever one is your faction. We need to be agreeable on that, and if we want money. We don't want you to say, we're going to give you, don't give me nothing, give me my money. Like James Brown said, open, open up the door. I I'll do it myself. <laughs> See, so that's the whole thing. Now, now, 30 seconds. You got, you got, oh, I do? Yeah, you got 30 seconds. Okay. Say something, then I'm the 30 sec okay. I wanted to say this. Um, uh, we need 248 votes for this um, uh, study to be, um, to be pushed to the Senate House, I believe. That's the next step. And the thing is, is that everybody should go on their uh, the computer, wherever they need to go to, for for uh, 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 internet or whatever, and 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 con contact their uh, Congress people. Uh, uh, by Wednesday is a deadline because they talked about the markup, and I think it was five days. And we need to be flooding all of the uh, people on the hill about um, our uh, uh, understanding of the smoke screen that happened the other day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah now, uh, going off what Cheryl said, uh, yeah. we, we need to do this and we do need yeah. to do it now. Yes. Uh, you can do it from the comfort of your home. If you yes. can hop on a bus or a plane or whatever the heck you had to do to get here, turn on your computer. You, yeah. Let call. Facebook go for a couple minutes or something. Call you, you your yes. senator, call your congressman, call I your representative in your phones. area. And the question you should ask, uh, what was the pur what's the purpose of slavery? And let them know that you do not, they do not speak for you, you speak for yourself. Absolutely. Yes. And, and she said markup. I want to clarify okay, what the term markup means. A markup means what we saw, this, this, this facade that we saw was a hearing to determine whether they should actually think about the study. Mm -hmm. Then okay. after, after they do that, what happens is that this is, this is the procedure part that we need to understand. See, we need to know the technical parts of what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's not enough just to say what we saw. Okay, so what they do is, what happens is that something is introduced. Mm -hmm. And then Good. they do a study by saying we're going to, a markup means, then we, we go in a committee, and then we debate whether we're going to amend this, approve this, or disapprove this. And if we have come to a consensus that we approve it, then we bring it to the whole House, the House of Representatives, and then it's on the floor. Mm -hmm. And then they can vote to pass or not pass. Usually what they do is they attach things, extra things called riders. This is how mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. get attached to, to mm -hmm. bills, and, and it gets sent to the Senate and it has to be approved by the House of Representatives, then it goes over to the Senate. But this is what happens. This would also could happen. The people that are on this committee could argue and hash and hash and hash all day long and then decide not to go any further with it, and then it's dead in the water. So then it never gets to the, so there's no markup on it. So that means it never gets to the whole House of Representatives 
to even be, be brought to the floor. So that's why it's important to choice about these calls because you want to make them know, yes, 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 you need to come to an agreement that, yes, this needs to go and be marked up so they can be presented to the House. That's, that's, just, that's just to get the conversation about the conversation, which I'm tired of talking about this conversation, but I want some money walking with this conversation. So that's, that's the whole thing. So, that's, and so next week, um, we're going to have some really hot-button um, mm -hmm. conversation here. I want to uh, let everyone know that uh, yesterday we went to uh, Power Talk. Oh, before I finish on that, mm -hmm. the special election news conference, reparations and the 2020 elections, that's going to be at the National Press Club, yeah. which is at 529 14th Street Northwest, Washington, D.C. It's Monday, the 1st of July, from 1 to 3. You're going to have all kinds of guests there, like I said, it's at the National Press Club. You can go on their website, or you can go, you can go info at black-empowerment.com. That's www.black-empowerment.com. And you can find out more information, or you can call 202-875-9623. That's 202-875-9623. It's reparations and the 2020 election. We were went to the power Some of talk. Those, those books too. Yeah, uh, we went to the power talk yesterday. Mm -hmm. Power talk. Um, Carl Nelson hosted it. Um, our wonderful esteemed colleague and Baba Jim Klingman was a recipient of the Francis Cross Wilson Francis Award, Cress. deservedly mm -hmm. so. Keep him up in your prayers as he uh, is dealing with uh, a medical condition that renders him unable to travel. So hmm. shout out to, to, to Dr. Jim Klingman. If you don't know him, look at Power, look at uh, Black Economics. You can find information about, about him. He used to be an NNPA uh, columnist in black newspapers all across the country and had a lot to say. We support Sweet Unity Farms Coffee. Sweet Unity Farms Coffee is a collective that is in Tanzania. It's the only all black owned collective of coffee in the world. David Robinson, who's the youngest son of great Jackie Robinson, Jackie Robinson, is like the administrator of this collective. There are many families, his family, many other families. So if you want coffee, good coffee, go to sweetunityfarmscoffee.com. Black owned, black Support grown. your Support. black brother. The African Diaspora Ancestral Commemorative Commemoration. They gave the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, celebration for the, the ancestral um, ceremony yesterday. If you want more information about them, you can contact them at 202-505-2896. That's 202-505-2896. They're at Facebook at A-D-A-C-I Ancestors. And they're at Facebook at that. You can find that it's a founding member of the International Coalition to commemorate the African ancestors of the Middle Passage. Wonderful women we met there yesterday. Imagination Press had several books that were there. If you want to get them, go to imaginationpressonline.com. My grandma is HIV positive. We had that author here once before, mm -hmm. Miriam Whitehead Bryce. Ph phenomenal book. It's a good read for your young children. God, School, and Math, Melissa Simmons. Wonderful book. Great read. We have a whole list of books called uh, From Our Friends in Africa. Some of the titles are Mensa, The Boy Who Lives Beyond the Sea, Anatu and Her Lucky Braids. Musa and the Goat Herder, Kofi, the Farmer's Son, the Master Drummer, Anansi Goes to the City, Azu and the Lion Who Couldn't Swim, Cujo and the Crazy Tortoise, Cujo and the Hungry Caterpillar, Cujo and the Fast Brown Rabbit, Cujo and the Bumblebee, Cujo and the Wicked Crow, Personal Hygiene and Sir Wild and the Rude Parrot. Those books are available for on imaginationpressonline.com. Two young black men I met yesterday. They were phenomenal. This young man oh. wrote a book. Name, his name is Marcus. The name of the book is called I Am Who I Am. It's an easy read. It's only $5. It's a wonderful book. You can contact him at www.learnanddopublishing. That's learn and, and do, do publishing.com. Marcus Hanley. He was there with his daughters. He brought them yesterday. Great book. Easy read. This book was by um, um, Brother Al. Brother Al made, oh, that's a telephone number. Okay, I'm glad I didn't know where I put it. He said this book is dedicated to his mom, Kylene Graham. Thank you for your knowledge and support. This book is a book about a young boy named Wayne who oh, had a yeah. dream. Oh, Wayne. Wayne, oh. yeah, Wayne, Wayne was talking about what would be happening if the African adventurers had never been on the, on the face mm -hmm. of this earth. And so he has a dream, he wakes up, and then he wakes up, he discovers 
The refrigerator's not here. Mm. The lawnmower's not here. All these things that would never have ever come into being if African adventurers had never been born on this earth. Colorful, easy to read, contact him, Alfred Graham. Go to Alfred Graham's website. Let me see, let me get it for you real quick. Real quick. Alfred Graham's website is uh, 4960publishing.com, 4960publishing.com. And my friend, Dr. Bruce Willis, he the, wrote the Indinkra Dictionary. This hmm. is a phenomenal read. I'm telling you, this, I had a copy. I gave it to someone, and I got another one yesterday. He's a solid man. Make you laugh, but I'll tell you what. It's it's all point. Yes, indeed. Okay. Sean. Okay. Uh, another author, young author uh, that we have is called. Uh, Her name is Dr. Sylvia Crudup. Her name is Dr. Sylvia Crudup. Crudup. Uh, for black men only. Now, oh, this yeah. is a good dynamic yeah. book, you know, and, 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 and it helps. Men be men, golly. That, you know, it's just, that just, okay, but <laughs> get, this, get this book. I mean, you know, we need to get back into uh, uh, reading and educating our children. Um, um, it's a book about us where you can look through the pages let me see if I see little white Tommy in here nowhere, anywhere. Nope, no little white Tommy. Here's another book. Uh, let's take back black love. Let's see his little Tommy in here or a little white Susie. Nope, no white Tommy or no white Susie. But this is by uh, Dr. Sil uh, same person. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. We need to, you know, so these are bedtime stories that you can read your children. Mm -hmm. And it gives them a sense of belonging, a sense of being. No little white Tommy or no little <laughs> white Susie. And of course, you know Dr. Claus, uh, uh, Black Labor, book, White Wealth, dynamic book by a dynamic artist. And, and so, and Dr. Claus be going around all over the country, the world actually, teaching about the concept of Black Labor, White Wealth to get you educated, to let you know that you know something, you are somebody, and you are required. Uh, 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 you are old. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know what I mean? Stop letting them set the narrative. Uh, just like we were saying earlier, um, uh, uh, Cheryl was saying uh, black folks or uh, 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 Negroids or uh, now we the... Uh, oh, she's talking about the different, the different, different, different names. Tribes. Oh, different, no, no, the different... Uh, yeah, you, you know, some... Different tribes. Tribes or whatever, yeah. These books, books, there are books out there that tell you who you are. Okay. I'm, I'm getting a little long-winded, yeah. but uh, uh. Get, get these books. I mean, they're for you. They're for your children. Like I say, you ain't going to see little white Tommy or little white Susie. So you, you can look in there and see a, a, a black face. Say, hey, that look like bowl down the street. But anyway, just... Last thing, <laughs> Blacktricity. Um, that's probably Jawara uh, oh, yeah, at HarambeRadio.com. Yeah, yeah. You got to check him out, Harambe Radio. Here's the truth. Shout out to Don T. who came all the way from Richmond, Virginia um, with, the, uh, with the Zado shirt on. Hey, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Don T, we got you. Love you all. Next week, same place. Don't Tune miss in. us. Don't miss us. Stan, take us home. <laughs> <laughs>